Hello everyone, and welcome back to Nancy Drew and the Clue Crew. Lights, camera, cats. And this will be the last episode in this book. Chapter 9, Closing In. Next tape, Nancy called out. I think this is our third tape, George remarked. It's kind of boring watching the same green door for hours and hours with nothing happening. Bess added, yawning. The three girls were sitting in Mr. Banner's office with Mr. Banner, Yasmin, and Mr. Drew. They were watching videotapes on the director's large screen TV. But they weren't just any videotapes. They were the videotapes from the special security camera Nancy had discovered. The one across from the green door on soundstage number three. The tapes were all from Tuesday morning when Fluffington disappeared. It's very clever of you girls to come up with the idea of watching these tapes, Mr. Banner said. Another image of the green door flashed across the TV screen. The tapes were only video, no audio, which meant there was no sound. Then the image of, a green, of the green door twitched. Something was happening. A woman appeared on the TV screen. She had short, silver blonde hair. Nancy frowned. She looked familiar. The woman kneeled down by the green door. She set a red bowl on the ground and poured some kibbles into it from a plastic bag. Then she rattled the bull, as if trying to make a noise with it. Oh my gosh, Bess blurted out. Maybe she's Fluffington's kidnapper. All of a sudden, Nancy knew why the woman looked familiar. That's Felicity Katz, she said excitedly. Her picture was in this morning's Hollywood Herald. She's the president of the Fluffington Fan Club, right, Mr. Banner? Oh yes, her, Mr. Banner said. What is she doing on the studio grounds? How did she get past the security guards? Nancy watched the TV screen intently. A moment later, the green door opened ever so slightly. A paw reached out. A fluffy white paw. On the TV screen, Felicity Katz glanced over her shoulder as if to make sure no one was looking. Then she opened the green door wider. A fluffy white cat rushed out and headed right for the bowl. Fluffington, Mr. Banner exclaimed. Felicity Katz is definitely the kidnapper, George said. Then the image twitched. A truck appeared on the screen. After a few minutes, the truck drove away. The image of the green door appeared again. Felicity Katz and Fluffington were gone. The security camera was paying attention to the truck, so we don't know what happened to Mrs. with Miss Katz and Fluffington, Nancy said, disappointed. Mr. Banner turned to Yasmin. Call the police. I want them to arrest Felicity Katz ASAP, he barked. Nancy stood up. Wait, Mr. Banner, we don't have any proof that Miss Katz actually kidnapped Fluffington. We only have proof that she fed her crunchies, she said. I think we should talk to her first. If you can get her here, I think I know what to do. Mr. Banner seemed to consider this. Okay, he said finally. But if she doesn't give us the information we need, I'm definitely calling the police. I was so, so pleased to get your phone call asking me to help you find Fluffington, Felicity Katz said to Mr. Banner as she sat down across the desk from him. I'm happy to do whatever I can to locate America's favorite feline. Nancy studied Felicity Katz. She looked just like she did in the Hollywood Herald photo and the security videotape. Today she was dressed in a Fluffington t-shirt and jeans. She carried a cat-shaped purse and wore a chunky necklace made of cat-shaped beads. Matching cat-shaped earrings dangled from her ears. Nancy, George, Bess, and Mr. Drew were in Mr. Banner's office. They had all waited there for Felicity Katz to arrive. So what can I do? Miss Katz said eagerly. I have a website devoted to Fluffington. I know everything there is to know about her. You can start out by watching a little TV, Mr. Banner said. Miss Katz frowned. What? I'm sorry, I don't understand. Mr. Banner turned to Nancy. Go ahead. Nancy picked up the remote control and switched on the TV set. The image of Miss Katz flashed across, across the screen. She poured crunchies into the red bowl, and a moment later, Fluffington appeared. Stop that, Miss Katz cried out. I can explain everything. You kidnapped Fluffington, didn't you? Bess burst out. Why did you do it, Miss Katz? Miss Katz shook her head. No, no, it wasn't like that at all. You see, I was just trying to get a potograph of Fluffington. I snuck past the security guard at the front gate while he was on a phone call. 
I managed to lure Fluffington out of that green door using crunchies. My goodness, Fluffington has a big appetite. Frankly, you people need to think about putting her on a little diet, she added. Anyway, when I tried to pick her up on the, for the potographing process, she wouldn't let me. She hissed at me. Can you imagine? Me, her number one fan. Then she got distracted by a huge yellow creature in the bushes. The two of them ran off somewhere. You're making this up, Mr. Banner accused her. It's the craziest story I've ever heard. A potograph? What is that anyways? An autograph of Fluffington's paw, Miss Katz explained patiently. I brought the ink with me and everything. Vegetable-based ink, I might add. I wanted to make sure it would be safe for Fluffington's delicate tummy. Well, Fluffington's delicate but very large tummy. Nancy was silent as she thought over Miss Katz's story. Was the fan club president telling the truth? Or was she spinning a tall tale to cover up her kidnapping crime? One of the details in Miss Katz's story tugged at Nancy's brain. Did you say something about a huge yellow creature? She asked Miss Katz. Miss Katz nodded. A huge yellow cat, Fluffington, and this cat seemed to be best friends or something. Fluffington and the cat did nose kisses when they saw each other, and then they ran off down the road. Nancy considered this. I think I know how to find Fluffington, she announced. Chapter 10. It's a rat. Everyone stared at Nancy. How can we find Fluffington? Mr. Banner asked her. If you have any brilliant ideas, please share them with us. I think the yellow cat is honey mustard, Nancy began. Yasmin told George Bess and me that he hangs out at the studio sometimes. It sounds like Fluffington went somewhere with honey mustard on Tuesday morning, which means that if he that if we can find honey mustard, we might be able to find Fluffington. Sounds like a plan, Nancy, Mr. Drew told her. Yes, it sounds like a marvelous plan, Miss Katz exclaimed. Let's begin immediately. How can I help? I think we should have a two-part strategy, Nancy suggested. First, we should set out lots of bowls of crunchies inside and out to try to lure Honey Mustard. Honey Mustard is a stray, so he doesn't have an owner who feeds him. He might be hungry. Poor little guy, Bess said sympathetically. Poor big guy, I mean. Second, a bunch of us should spread out and search for Honey Mustard inside and outside. Nancy went on. Yasmin told us that he has six toes on each paw, so we should be able to so we should be on the lookout for any paw prints with six toes. Mr. Branner nodded. I'll get the cast and crew together. We'll organize a massive search team to look for honey mustard. Here, honey mustard. Here, yellow kitty. Here, honey oney mustard bear. Nancy, George, and Bess called out for honey mustard as they peered behind some flower bushes. Mr. Drew was nearby looking inside a storage shed. The four of them had been looking for honey mustard for the last hour. There were dozens of other search teams as well, scouring the grounds of Thunder Chicken Studios. They had searched the outside of several sound stages and warehouses. They had searched under dozens of parked cars, but they had found no sign of honey mustard or Fluffington for that matter. They continued down the narrow road that wound through the studio grounds. They soon reached a dirt path that branched off from the road. Nancy noticed something on the path. Look, she cried out. What is it, Nancy? George asked her. Nancy pointed to a series of paw prints on the dusty path and counted. One, two, three, four, five, six. There are six toes on each paw. Let's follow the paw prints and see if they lead us to honey mustard. And Fluffington, too, Nancy said. She lowered her voice. Let's be super quiet. If the kitties are out there somewhere, we don't want to scare them away. Bess, George, and Mr. Drew nodded. The four of them continued down the dusty path following the paw prints. The path led through a grove of palm trees and into a clearing. In the middle of the clearing was a tugboat. The tugboat was small and looked very old, with, chip, with chipping white paint and faded blue trim. The tugboat's name was inscribed on its side. It was Fish Party. I wonder if this boat was in a movie, Nancy whispered. A tiny sound came from the boat. Nancy strained trying to hear. It sounded like a bird. The sound came again and again. That's not a bird, Nancy thought. She rushed up to the tugboat and peeked inside. George, Bess, and Mr. Drew followed her. What is it? Bess whispered. Nancy gasped at the sight that greeted her. Inside the boat were Fluffington and Honey Mustard. They were curled up on some old life preservers. Curled up next to Fluffington were six tiny kittens. 
Three of the kittens were fluffy and white, just like Fluffington. The other three were yellow, the same color as Honey Mustard. Fluffington's a mom, George cried out. And Honey Mustard's dad, Mr. Drew added with a chuckle. The kittens continued making their tiny mewing noises. Fluffington gave each of them a bath by licking them with her pink tongue. Nancy smiled. Fluffington had disappeared so she could give birth to her kittens. Nancy remembered that pregnant cats like to go off on their own, away from humans, and nest right before giving birth. Fluffington's nest had been some life preservers. Inside a tugboat called Fish Party, this also explained why she had been such a big kitty. The clue crew solves another mystery, Nancy thought happily. She couldn't wait to share the good news with Mr. Banner and everyone else back at the studio. Cut! Mr. Banner shouted. Great scene, kids. That's a wrap. Nancy, George, and Bess turned to each other and exchanged high fives. Mr. Banner had just finished shooting an outdoor scene. To thank the girls for finding Fluffington, he had given each of them one line of dialogue to say. Nancy's line had been, Did you see that? George's line had been, It looked like an alien from outer space. Bess's line had been, There's no such thing as aliens. So in the end, they had gotten to be more than extras in a crowd scene. They had gotten to be real actors. Nancy loved being in a Hollywood movie. Acting is almost as fun as solving mysteries, she thought. Mr. Drew and Hannah came up to Nancy and her friends and gave them big hugs. They had been watching from the sidelines. You're, a movie st you're movie stars now, Hannah said. Can I have your autographs? Nancy's dad joked. Nancy giggled. Sure, daddy. Just then, Fluffington trotted up to Nancy and rubbed up against her ankle, purring. Nancy reached down to pet her. Then Fluffington trotted off to join Honey Mustard. and their six kittens. The Fluffington Honey Mustard family shared a cozy new kitten bed now, right next to the director's chair. Nancy was so glad that she, George, and Bess had found Fluffington, Honey Mustard, and their babies safe and sound. She was also glad that she had solved another piece of the mystery, the identity of the person who had to talk to the Hollywood Herald about Fluffington. The culprit had been Beazle. Nancy had overheard him bragging about it to a friend on his cell phone. It looked like Beazle hadn't changed his troublemaking ways at all. If the movie stars aren't too tired, would they be interested in some pizza? Mr. Drew said to Nancy and her friends. I'm treating. Yes, Nancy, George, and Bess said all together. Meow, Fluffington and Honey Mustard cried. Nearby, Pom Pom barked. Nancy laughed. It was a perfect Hollywood ending. Okay, and that is the end of... Lights, camera, cats. I hope you liked it. I'll see you next time for a new book. Bye.